What's up, hybrids? Welcome back to another episode of the Phantom Hybrid Podcast. This is Hanako, and I am here with Anthony and Mike, and we are discussing episode seven of season two of Marvel's What If, and the episode is What If Hella Found the Ten Rings? Man, this episode was hella good. I was <laughs> hella skeptical, but then it's like I was hella surprised, and so I was actually hella satisfied with this episode. I knew it was coming. As soon as I saw his screen name, I was like. But seriously, okay, seriously, I it took me two watching, like two it that when I first watched this episode, I was just like, I don't know about this. I, I didn't really like it at first. But as really? I watched it a couple more Yeah, because it's just like the like the other the Gamora one where I felt like they kind of threw it in. It's it just seemed kind of extra because it, it's between it's between the Kahori and the and the Captain Carter episode where she's thrown in the 1602, mm-hmm. and it just kind of didn't fit. And I was just kind of like, this is really random. And I was just kind of like, man. But I had to actually watch it. And but after watching it another couple of times, it's one of my favorite episodes. I mean, like you, like your screen name says, it's the duo we did not know we needed, but right. I'm glad they did that because. It's so weird watching them like flirt with each other and damn near and try to kill each other at the same time. It's like they're they're like really toxic, but you can't. It's like you want to turn away, but you're like, you know what? Okay, I ship it. Sure, let's go. That's kind of how I felt. It was like <laughs> watching it and 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 kind of going through the motions or or kind of going through the episode and seeing what's going on. It was like. You know how we talk about um, which one is it? Uh, Avengers, Endgame, and we talk mm-hmm. about how they took characters from like the different properties and threw them together. And it's like I didn't know I needed to see Thor with the Guardians of the Galaxy until I saw Thor with the Guardians of the Galaxy, and it just for whatever reason it worked. Like him and Rocket and Group worked and you know star lord with tony and and strange and peter even though it was like a back and forth like sibling squabbling it still worked and that's kind of how i looked at this episode i was like okay so we already know the background with hella from what we know of her in the mcu we know she's like fire destruction death blah 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 so i'm looking at this episode like okay I'm already prepared not to like her. And not only did I find myself liking her in this episode, by the end, I was rooting for her to whoop Odin's ass. And I was like, wait, what? I'm not supposed to be rooting for her. But this, the way that they wrote the story and then the way that they um, paired her with both Wen Wu and with, um, J- I think her name is Jaya? Jaya? I can't um, remember. I think that's right. Yeah, but, Jaya. but the way she was paired with both of them is like both people kind of without the influence of each other that we saw in Shang-Chi, they both were kind of similar in temperament, except when Wu was trying to woo her and trying to, I won't say he was trying to control her. She felt like he was trying, he was trying to control her. And then on the other hand, when she got to Ty Lo, they were like, okay, we're going to let you figure some of this stuff out for yourself. Oh, you figured it out. Okay, now we can train you. It was like different approaches to the same kind of, you know, philosophy, but it worked. Both of them worked. And I was like, I like this. You know, she, yeah, reminded, I thought it was me of, cool. she reminded me of Catwoman. Like she reminded me, she had a whole like kind of Selena Kyle energy because she's really sarcastic. She can fight. She has another, another agenda underneath whatever she's doing Mm -hmm. and she kind of is but she but she still kind of has that like the sultriness to kind of draw you in but then she tries to shank you when you get too close (laughs) right so it's like she she was really giving off selena kyle energy i think that i think that's why i like it because catwoman is probably one of my favorite dc characters just because of how sneaky she is it's just it's just something uh, it's probably probably back to Eartha Kit watching Eartha Kit as a kid and just being enthralled. But but Catwoman's one of my favorite characters, and I really I really saw that with her. Yeah, what were you saying? You you were saying something earlier, Anthony. Oh, I was just saying I thought it was a pretty cool episode. I like the um 
the it was like half Thor, half Shang Chi. It was it was pretty. Mm-hmm. You know, Rogers didn't have to do too much work, but um, I, I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah, because they took yeah, elements they're... from both of those movies and and kind of just changed the character. But yeah, yeah, it worked. They kind of took. They kind of took like. They they tried to take like the best out of from Ragnarok and the best from from the first Thor from Ragnarok and from Shang Chi and kind of ball it up together and mix it up mm-hmm. because it's like you saw you saw like him banishing Hela to Midgard you see you see him grabbing him catching Mjolnir like she did in Ragnarok and breaking it mm-hmm. and oh. then it's like and everything else kind of like blended together too it was just actually. I mean, the, 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 yeah, it's like the more I watched it, I was just like, damn, I actually really like this episode. Yeah. So let's talk about the episode a little bit. So the the way the story goes, you know, we get a little bit of the introduction of Hela and Odin and how they are, you know, conquering worlds. They're trying to bring control to the nine realms. And after the nine realms, Odin is kind of like, okay, we have peace. We can sit and chill. And Hela is like, no, I want more. Like we can conquer the whole universe. And Odin's like, no, this is not what we're going to do. And so of course she gets, she starts throwing her hella tantrum and he banishes her the way that he did. Like you said, in the first movie with Thor. Now, the interesting thing about this, watching it from the beginning and then watching it at the end, you really see that Odin is like, we saw it in the movies, the live action movies, but he's like a really shit dad. And it's <laughs> illustrated so well in this matter of fact, I think Anthony, I'm going to have to put Odin on that list when, the next time we do the mm-hmm. father's panel. He's it's basically a Nordic Zeus. a shit dad. He's a yeah, Nordic he's... Zeus. It's like he's it's basically the same thing. Well, yeah, okay. Mm-hmm, no, Kinda I mean, sorta, well, I but... mean, without without as much philandering, but he's still a douchebag. <laughs> right. That's what I was gonna say. You know, the the difference between him is at least it seemed like he was like really, really in love with his wife, and that you know that was his life, and Zeus is just totally different. But yeah, it's like you and and she says it to him. She's like, "This is the way you made me." You trained me to be this bloodthirsty person. I mean, you call her your executioner. Did you really think she was going to be content to sit at home and twiddle her thumbs just because you felt satisfied? Like you didn't give her, as she says in the episode, you didn't give her a choice of who or what she wanted to be. And this is all she knows. And then because she wants to keep doing it then you banish her you take her powers you kind of sort of i guess make her mortal because when uh one of when Wu soldiers punched her she started bleeding she was like mortal blood Ugh, disgusting <laughs> but you do this and then when she disappears into talo apparently heimdall can't see into talo so he goes to tell odin hey so I don't have eyes on her anymore. Oh, and by the way, there's a guy on the planet who has uh, a weapon that could possibly kill the gods. Oh, let's go avenge my daughter. Excuse <laughs> me? You sent her there in the first place. Back to Odin being a terrible parent. This, You know, his track record. The thing, the thing they all have in common is he has an idea for them to be a certain way and they don't want to be that way. Mm-hmm. Like Loki didn't really want to be what he was, and we saw him make that transition to actually doing something, achieving his glorious purpose in right. um whatever that other show was, Loki. And then, God, and then you wait, have, hold up, hold up. Did you say whatever that other show wa- was, the show that's actually named after him? <laughs> I mean, I, was guys, saying. I know we haven't gotten around to discussing it yet, but good grief, Anthony. And and then we have Sylvie, who was told at a young age that she couldn't be what she wanted to be. And then you have Thor, who is basically supposed to be destined to be the ruler of Asgard. And when he finally gets it, he doesn't want to be that either. He wants mm-hmm. to go find himself. Yeah. So that, that seems to be something that that 
that Odin does with his kids. And he probably does it with a lot of his subjects. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's kind of like the whole thing with, um, you know, kind of like with sports uh, parents or soccer moms, you know, you're living vicariously through your children. And I, I feel like he's kind of doing that in a way. Like, oh, I want you to be this. I want you to be this. I want you to be that. But also, he's not really showing them. He's not showing them the proper way to do it, I guess, because he he doesn't really know the proper way to do it. Well, he, he's OK. I'm going to take a side step for a moment. Here's a real deep dive into the comics. OK, let's go. <laughs> um, they may have read comics once or twice, but at mm-hmm. some point. Odin was a normal human and the Asgardians were actually aliens for real. Mm-hmm. And when they, they met him and he actually, they granted him power. And what he did was he recreated them into Asgard. Mm. So they were all like mental. He, he shaped them into what the, the um, Norse God pantheon was and that's why odin was so powerful so odin is a colonizer (laughs) basically i mean if you i mean if you think about the way you just said i I can't remember why they came there i can't remember why they came to earth but they saw him and they they gave him the power to do that to them oh okay he created If, if, if they if he did it with their consent then that's different Right, so he, I, I, they may have retconned it, but yeah, he he reshaped them with the o, the Odin power or the Odin force. Mm. But anyway, that's this. So that kind of tracks along with he's got roles for everybody in his head, and they're supposed to stick to these roles that they have. Okay, like imagine him though saying, "You know what? I don't want to watch people all the time. I feel like a stalker. Like that, <laughs> that's what you basically have me do: stalking everyone." Yeah, no, I'm done with doing that. anything else though, but I guess that's because I've only seen him doing what he does as far that's as like, all he um, does. He may want to be a bird watcher, <laughs> you know, but no, he's got to watch. And, uh, and of course, he stands guard, he's the first line of defense, blah blah blah. But most of the time, he's stalking. That's what he right. does, right? I but, always feel like somebody's, somebody's watching, watching me. me, but I mean, him though. Given, I don't know, given given what Odin has done and I don't, I, I don't know, I think I think it's good that Heimdall is doing that, is, is watching out for everything because, of course, we know Earth is like always full of chaos because somebody's always attacking it or something is going on. But sending, like sending Hela there, you could have sent her anywhere else. You could have sent her anywhere else. Well, in in the main MCU you're talking about, he sends her to hell. Here, he sent her to Earth. That that was the difference. No, he act, no, he act, he actually he sent her to hell first. Then she came back and tried to tried to overthrow oh, yeah. him, and yeah. and he caught. That's when he caught Mjolnir yeah. and broke it, and said banished her to Midgard and took her crown. Mm. Okay. So, what well, well did it because I thought. I thought it was like the way the watcher was explaining it. He was saying at this point in the story, this is where he usually sends her to hell. But in this universe, he sent her to Midgard. I can't remember because I, I remember. I remember. No, I think he, he, he sent her to Midgard. Yeah. He didn't send her to hell. Yeah, that's what I was universe. thinking. Yeah. yeah. You know what? Yeah, because I remember seeing because I remember seeing her like on her knees in hell with her head bowed. But I'm like, okay, that must have been when he said, this is when this is when he would he would have sent her, mm-hmm. but instead he sent her to Midgard. Okay, right. I apologize. Right. I was wrong. So anyway, she comes to Midgard, and her helm is also sent to Earth the same way Mjolnir Mul- um, was in the first Thor movie. And you know what does he say? Um, she. Uh, what does he say? She who learns mercy shall inherit the power of Hela. So basically yeah. that was supposed the to same. be her her uh her lesson. He wanted her to learn um to appreciate life because you know she's the goddess of death. She wants to kill and raid and do all this other stuff. Was it appreciate life or show mercy? 
Th- those well, are not he, the same she had to learn to show mercy <laughs> in order to get the power of hella back. Right. But but I don't think it has. Time. I don't think it has anything to do with appreciating life, though. Yeah, because that was like a constant theme throughout the episode. Mm. But I mean, can you really can you really show mercy if you don't appreciate life? Yes, and that's that's literally what not he said really. to her. Yes, you can. How? I can show people mercy and still be ruthless, <laughs> conqueror. Say that again, but slowly. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's literally what he said. What he says to her. It's so. not literally what he says. He literally says the curses show mercy. Hold on, we're gonna we we're gonna have to pause because I'm pretty sure that's what he said to her. No God should ever show dominion over death who has so little appreciation of life. Mm-hmm. Huh. Really? <laughs> that, that still doesn't say he wanted her to appreciate life, but whatever. We'll agree to disagree. You literally just yes, said it fine. out your mouth. Fine. No, you know what? That just the just, you, you just don't want to lose. That's fine. We can we can just <laughs> We'll 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 let we'll let the people decide. How about that? Yeah, we can do that. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> so she gets the med guard and she lands right in Win Woo's like territory. And of course, he has the ten rings. This is before he has met his wife. This is uh, also for their timeline. This is before Thor and Loki were even a part of the family because what she mentions that he has this new girlfriend, Frigga. So they weren't even married at that point. So this is kind of like early on. She gets down to Midgard and she does her thing. Now I will say this. For it to be an animated series, just hearing Kate Blanchett do her thing, I literally like it almost felt like this cartoon character was alive. I she loved her. In, she this. interjected so much personality into and and actually all of like the guy who played Wen Wu or uh, who voiced Wen Wu, the guy who voiced Odin. I really thought it was Anthony Hopkins at first. Yeah, shout and out then, to shout and out then to you Jeff- start hearing a little bit of the difference in his voice. But at first I was like, I know they didn't get him to come back and do this. Yeah, that's um that's Jeff Bregman. He's the he's the current voice of Bugs Bunny in whatever you see Bugs Bunny in. Ah, okay. Yes, yeah, so he 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 basically took took that mantle from like from whoever had it before. So you no, have Bugs Hopkins. Bunny on this side and you have Odin on this side. <laughs> yeah, but he but he's he's a really talented voice actor, so mm-hmm. they got a good good one for him. Yeah. So, so. He sounded good, but you yeah. know, when she gets down there and when Wu finds her, she's doing her her little spiel. She's like, Oh, here are all these soldiers. You guys are coming to me. Um, so do you want to fight for me or do you want to fight me? And she's talking all this mad shit. <laughs> kind of similar to the way Thor was, but Thor was at least a little more humorous. She sounded she sounded murderous. But not just murderous. Like downright disrespectful. Downright disrespectful, but also in a way she sounded a little bit seductive too. Like she was trying to, you know, seduce them into coming to her side or to get in their ass whipped. Look at how she but look look at how they have they pictured her walking after she fell. Right. And it's like with the lightning behind her and her doing like the, the right. The like, full vixen like, walk. Seriously, like I was just like damn okay mm-hmm. like um, i'd follow her sure yeah <laughs> yeah fuck you when we went out i'm out well when Wu soldiers were not about to follow her matter of fact they were like they were looking at her like should we just execute her like she is talking mad junk and she's sitting here trying to do all her stuff with the magic and she's like what well, um so this usually works and nothing <laughs> that she was doing was working and then She's talking about she's about to she's about to whoop everybody. When we was like, yeah, take her in, arrest her, whatever the case is. And that dude punched her in the face. And see, those two scenes are cut where are from the first season of Loki, first episode of Loki to me. It's like like when she when she said that, she was like, oh, this usually works. 
when he this is like when mm. he was in front of the judges where he was like chink tried to get the lives and yeah when he came out and then when she got hit it's kind of like when b51 hit b16 hit him hit him with the the stick and he was like oh yeah the jaw was kind of flat yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah i was like I was like, okay, this is fucking. They're putting, they're throwing a little bit of everything in this episode. It's kind of, they, they, they kind of did throw a lot in this episode, like a little bit of Easter eggs to kind of throw back to everything to kind of, to kind of remind you of what they did. Mm-hmm. It's kind of weird to do it in this episode, though. And yeah, it's the like only I... thing, the only thing that really stood out to me was we learned that the Ten Rings aren't from the Nine Realms, so they're from somewhere else. But didn't we and know this from Shang Chi? Not really, not really. He they just say, "Oh, there's a signal. We don't know where the signal is going." Oh well, okay, but yeah. Here, right. Hindle couldn't see them. Well, he knew they weren't from the nine realms, right? And he knew he knew they could kill. They could. They were powerful enough to kill a god. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Odin was like, "Oh hell no, we need to get those." And, and and that's the other thing. You wasn't thinking about Midgard. You wasn't thinking about nothing. But you find out something that might be powerful enough to destroy you. That's mm-hmm. not about you. He's not <laughs> thinking about you. And he's not. This version of him is not thinking about world domination. And, you know, we talked about this in our unpublished Shang-Chi discussion, which I still have and. <laughs> Am gonna try yeah. to clean up. Yeah, because there there was there was some technical stuff going on with it. So I still gotta try to clean it up because I do want to get it out there. But okay. you know, one of the things that we learned about him was that he started out, I won't necessarily say evil. He had good intentions, and then the power of the rings and, and what he could do with it kind of corrupted him. Then he found his wife and she kind of chilled him the fuck out. And then when he lost her, he went back into that power mode but he had the anger and the rage of her murder behind him in this particular episode we kind of see the early when we where he's like i've been blessed with these powers and so you know they come to me from outside of the earth so i bless the earth with and she was like what by taking over everything he was like no by protecting the earth like this is what i'm this is what you're supposed to do when you have that kind of power you know, great with great power, great responsibility. He's trying to protect the earth. And he's trying to convince her, hey, with, with your skills and with your fire, because again, she's pissed. She wants to go home because she wants revenge on her dad. She doesn't want to be here. And she's showing all of that like kind of anger and that passion. He's like, look, you can it's almost like trying to talk a, a bad guy into being good. Look, you could use your powers for so much more than just being angry at your dad. Like, come here, help me protect the earth and help me do this. And she was like, no, not really. That's not what I want to do. And she ends up knocking him out when he tries to kiss her. First of all, why did you, were you not smart enough to realize that that was she? He fell for the okie doke. Of course he did. She fell out of the sky. She claims to be a Norse god. She's doing a little slinky, slinky thunder walk. He he wasn't thinking clearly. <laughs> the thunder walk. Not, he was not thinking. Yeah, he was doing a little slinky thunder walk, and he was not thinking clearly. He was like, okay, there's something about her. Let me try to impress her with my castle and my ten rings. And it was that red dress. That red exactly. dress was mesmerizing. Throw, throw Throw, 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 throw some silk on her. See, see how she reacts to that. And it's like, and she's just like, I, right, whatever. Mm-hmm. And she, she ain't go for that shit. But it's like, but, but he's not used to that because he's, because he's still Win Wu. He's still the, the big guy in charge. He's, he's not used to people not fall, not going, falling in line with what he says. Mm-hmm. So he's just like, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna throw a little bit of game on her, and she's gonna be like, she's gonna fall into my arms, and she's like, you thought. <laughs> She's like, I'm gonna knock out. you out and take your ten rings. Except, of course, she can't get the ten rings from him. So she flees and she finds uh, was it Murphy? Was that the thing's name? The little, the little I faceless footstool. So. I think so. Norris. Norris. Okay. Norris. Morris. So, Morris. Yeah. Morris. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So she flees. She runs into Morris. And I guess she can understand his language too, but he leads her to Talo. Now, okay. Hold on, hold on. See, I I realized that Morris, 
Morris is like Groot. It's like if you if Morris wants you to thing. understand him, you're gonna understand what he's saying. Right. It's just like he he just it'd be he's the same. Uh, Sorry, I didn't mean. I, I didn't mean I to steal your thunder n- rant. No, <laughs> no, no. I was gonna say how Thor spoke Groot because they teach it to them. That's true. Yeah, he was like, "Oh yeah, we learned this in like elementary." Yeah, but but, but Gamora didn't understand it because because she she wasn't in tune with him, and he and he really and he really didn't want her to understand what he was saying. What he was saying. When did mm-hmm. when did you say that? Like, how did you know that? They, I, they, I'm just they curious. Said, they said that in Guardians Three. They said they said that most people will you when when it's like you'll understand group when is is something that is something with his um. With how with who he is, it's like I got I got to go back and find it. But they said like how like how she was able to understand him at the very end of the movie, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but it wasn't because he didn't want her to understand what he was saying. May I mean it could have been because I mean if you think about it, that wasn't his Gamora. That wasn't the Gamora that he knew. So he was probably. Mm -hmm. I I don't think. Well, never mind. I I don't think it was. I don't think it was intentional. Why would he, he want to from understand. To understand what he's saying if he can control that? It's like because he's with the guardians. It's like it, it would behoove him to not have everybody understand what the fuck he's saying, especially like with especially for example with the high evolutionary. High evolutionary couldn't understand what he was saying, and it's like when he said "I am Groot," he just saw he was saying "I am Groot." It's like, it, but but when he wants you to understand what he's He's saying, we'll agree to I don't think it works like that. What is up with it? See, we're, we're why are we arguing? We're arguing more so, more so this episode than anything. What the hell, dog? I mean, it's not shit. arguing, it's just a difference of opinion, <sighs> and that's fine. We can do that, but anyway, saying, but, going but, back, going back to the episode, and Norris, well, Morris wanted her to understand um, her Morris because she wanted to go home. I no, no, okay. So, he, so here's my issue with Morris <laughs> why are you taking this stranger? To Talo, you don't know who she is. You don't know what kind of intention she has. Like, you haven't been in the room where she's basically like, oh, yes, I'm trying to take these powers so I can go and have revenge on my father and have revenge on this person and have revenge on this person. Like, why are you taking people to the secret to the secret hideout? Morris, stop doing that. Because she could have, well, okay, maybe he understood that there wasn't much she was going to be able to do against the people of Talo because they they put her in her place pretty quick when she was like, yeah, I'm this, I'm a skilled warrior, blah, 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 blah. And Jai was just basically like, okay, flicker with <laughs> some wind here, flicker with some petals here, flicker with some laundry here. Air bending. We, we got this. Yep. Yes. Yes airbending and and all the other stuff that they do but i need morris to not even in shang chi like dude you just taking people to tai Lo, even I though think I, he sees he, it was it was shang chi and his sister still I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna steal some of um mike's thinking you uh, know he could see into their souls and you know see what? the goodness <laughs> of her heart Hold up. No, no, no. God damn it, no. I, what, what are you talking about seeing into someone's soul? It That's how he was able to have her understand what he was saying. Because he could see I, how good she was. That's why he led soul. her. That's why he led her to Tylo. Because he could see how good she was. He could at, see the goodness in her. He, he She didn't have any goodness like in Luke her at that point. The goodness is inside no, of uh-uh, Darth you know Vader. What? No. No. Mm-mm. I feel you're making fun of me, and I don't like. I'm it. not. Like, I'm not making fun of you. I'm trying to. I'm trying to get back in tune with you, brother. I'm trying to get back. In okay, tune. okay, fine, fine. I'll, all I'm all I'm saying is, I I think I was I was just looking at it, and it seemed like she kind of understood, but really didn't understand. It's like she was when when she left, when she escaped, she had she had Morris on the horse, and she was riding away, and she was like, "We'll go to the north. There's some people that are still." They're still loyal to the Norse. No loyal to the Norse up there. It was just it was just gonna take a while, but unless you know some other people that'll that'll fight in my name. And he's like <laughs> and fly, flies up and tries to lead her. Mm-hmm. And she's like, Oh, well, well, you're not the first ass I followed in the battle. Okay, let's go. Her one liners were were fun. Her, her, 
Yeah, I know see? you. I know you enjoyed this episode because I was like, I know Mike is having a ball. Once I once I watched it again, I was like, okay, she's she's fucking my one of my favorite parts of this season. Like, like, perfect. and and also but she's yeah. a god, and you know, the nine realms is full of a diverse group of creatures, and they have to be yeah. able to communicate with them. So they probably have have some inherent ability to to learn different languages, right? Yeah, and I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she, if she's as old as because how old are Hella and Odin at at this point? Like before Thor, oh, because she was like a thousands. thousand years old or something, right? Yeah, and he's her dad, so he's way he's more thousands of years old. You know, we we meet um, Thor. I think he's like fifteen hundred years old. Okay. Okay. So she's a little bit. So she's older she's, than that. She's way older than that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. Um. So anyway, when she gets to Talo, you know, she's having the same kind of defiant attitude. She's having the same kind of oh well, you know what? Um. So I need to get revenge on my dad for all the bullshit he's put me through. So do you guys want to come fight with me? Oh, y'all don't want to fight with me? Okay. Well, I'm just gonna go and and do my own thing. And Jai basically sits there and talks to her in a very it's like it's not very pushy but at the same time she's speaking to hella in a way that i feel like sometimes sometimes i have to do it at work it's like you speak to someone as if they're stupid but as if not like you're talking to them like they're stupid you know what i'm saying it's like you're pointing out what they're obviously missing but you're doing it in a nice way so that you're not making them feel stupid. And I feel like she was kind of doing that with Hella here because she's trying to pull out, like, what is the root of your issue? Like, I know you have issues with your dad, but what is at the heart of it? What is really going on? And that's when Hella starts thinking back to like her childhood and just certain things that, that Odin did very specifically how he created the helm so that he could control her and control her powers. And she was like, "It's kind of like freedom. I just I want to be free. I want to be it's free. Like, to my own path and do what I want to do for a change." It's no, it's like not therapy. like Thor. Therapy. Oh. Leave me, man. <laughs> what, what I was gonna say is, it's I'm gonna title this episode <laughs> "Anthony versus Mike." <laughs> what if Anthony and Mike <laughs> <laughs> didn't agree for the whole episode? <laughs> What I was going to say <laughs> is that she was she was kind of she was lead trying to lead her to where she where she needed to go like a therapist mm -hmm. like you yeah. know just being like okay so this is what you think but what about this but okay you still think that okay but what about this mm -hmm. it's like she's kind of trying to get her to see but you know but she's more convinced she's so convinced that she's right she's like I'm not trying to hear all that I'm trying mm -hmm. to do this she's like okay but what if you do this. Then she's like, "Okay, fine. Here's the wind. Here, let me, let me, let me, let me get this wind together and and swirl all these flags around you, so you can finally see this, see this shit like you're supposed to see." Mm -hmm. And like I, that was one of my favorite scenes, like where she and she like finally browbeat her down and quit and got her to see what the fuck was going on. But it took her like swirling wind and red flags around her to show her the red flags. Hey, I just got that. Okay, but anyway. But I don't <laughs> feel like she, she didn't browbeat her. I think. She just kind of gently led her there. It's like because Hella has she's so forceful and she's so um she's so strong in her opinions and how she feels. And you know, she's got this rage, which I believe is understandable. Like your dad created you to be this certain thing, and then because you continue to be this certain thing, he banishes you. Like what child wouldn't be angry? I mean, or child, adult, whatever. Like, this is what you made me. And now you want me to be something different, but I don't know how to be anything different because I you've never taught me how to do that. And I think Jai just kind of gently guided her to what the root of the problem was, which was she wanted to have control of her own life. She didn't want to be controlled by anybody else anymore. And one of the things that Jai tells her when Hella is like, so when are you going to teach me to fight? And she was like, you already know how to fight, but you need to learn how to control what's inside you because that is like the root of our power and, and what we do. 
And so you see the montage of her training. I don't know how long she's been there, but you see the montage of her training and learning these things and Jai teaching her. And you can kind of see it taking root in her because she's able to do the things that the rest of the Talo people are able to do. And what happens? She's sitting there, she's meditating, and then she sees the, um, what you call it? The portal, the, what do you call that beam? I can't remember right now. Bifrost. Yes. She sees and she's like, damn, here go my daddy. <laughs> Coming to get me. Just as I'm having a good time. But Odin, when he approaches her, first of all, he comes to uh, Talo's territory. I mean, not Talo. He comes to Wenwu's territory. And that's who he's fighting. His army is fighting Wenwu and his warriors when Hela comes. She tells Jai, she was like, look, my dad is here. I'm a, I, I got to go fight him. I got to go take care of this. And Jai was like, um, so if you do this, you do it on your own. You, you know, and she was like, well, you know, how, how am I supposed to, what, what was it they kept saying? Um, you can't fight the darkness with darkness only with the light. And she was like, how will I ever be able to do that if I don't face him? And then as she leaves, Jai smiles like she got it. Okay. <laughs> and then that's all we see of the Talo people. So she shows up, she stands next to Wen Wu, who is looking at her like, oh, there you are. Whatever past transgressions they had between them is gone because they start fighting Odin. And again, I'm sitting here looking at them and looking the way that they're fighting in tandem and everything. And I was like, this is the power couple I didn't know I needed. Like Mike said, I ship it. I don't. Why not? I don't care. Then? Because <laughs> it means we're not going to get Shang Chi. I There's understand. Be right, you know, it, this is a whole nother good. universe. You ain't got to worry about all that. Shang Chi and Wen Wu were Wen Wu's still dead in the other universe. You ain't got to worry about all that shit. My, well, you know what? He is. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. And I mean, this is what if we might still get Shang Chi. You never know because mm. I don't think. I don't know if Hella is relationship material after being oppressed by her dad for all of her life. She's probably in that like, oh yeah, let's just be friends. She's probably going to put Wen Wu in the friend zone because he very obviously is interested in her and she's just looking at him like, mm, okay, whatever. She's about to friend zone him. But I still ship it. But if they, you know, she's going to friend zone him, that's, that's fine. But they work well together. They do. Especially, I guess, once she once she has had her change of her change of heart, her change of mind, and she sees that, oh, okay, you know what? Having the power, that's not everything. Because he this motherfucker is, he got the power. He's an idiot. And I'm I'm talking about Odin. He's an idiot. You come down, oh daughter, I was worried about you when we couldn't see you, when Heimdall couldn't see you. I came here to avenge you. So come come fight in your she looking like I didn't ask you to do all that for me. I don't even want you here. Like go home. She's like a defiant teenager. But again, Odin deserves it because he's very much an asshole in this episode. But I again them falling for the okie dokes because when she finally stops fighting him and she's like father uh let's let's put all this violence behind us and he's on his knees and she holds out her hand I was like it ain't it ain't time yet because Odin has not been humbled quite nearly enough for him to grab your hand and be like okay yes let there be a peace between us I wonder if, if his girlfriend Frigga is what changed him. Maybe Frigga is actually the bad guy. Maybe Frigga is turning him against everybody. It's like you know, everybody thought Frigga was the was the good stepmom. Maybe she's the evil stepmom. I no. mean, most stepmoms are evil anyway. Mm -mm. I don't see that because just the way, just the way she was in in the Thor movies when we saw her, when we saw her, um, when Thor went back to get you know, the, um, the time stones and everything. I, I just, 
I mean, Maybe yeah, I get I, the ether. Yeah. yeah, the ether. I'm sorry. But yeah, I just don't see that being her. Now, his stance for peace before he sent Hello away, maybe that was her influence. Because if you've been fighting and, and you know, putting boot to ass for thousands of years, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, okay, I, I think I'm done. There had to be a catalyst for that. It you know? was Frigga. So yeah, yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying. I think it was And it was unfair of him to expect Hella to make a change like that so quickly. Mm -hmm. She yeah. didn't have I mean, the same I'm, catalyst. Yeah, right. I mean, but this could this could be the same Frigga that when he went for his sleep, she was like, All right, I'm out. I'm going to go see with the girls. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, lie. You know. I mean, you know, she she she, she literally was like, "All right, Thor, be good. I'll see you later." And then when when he started tearing up Midgard, she was like, oh, "This motherfucker!" Right, I, like, I can't even have a spa go. day. <laughs> exactly. I got to put my wine down. Stop talking to my girls and figure out what the fuck's going on here. The fuck you doing? Are you typical, you typical, mother, typical mother stuff? That's what we do. We can't enjoy nothing because we got to go take care of the kids because <laughs> dad is useless and don't know what they're doing. Not all of them, but some of them. <laughs> You know. Oh my God! But yeah, obviously uh, okay. Odin didn't know how to, to relate to his kids. Obviously, because Frig I mean, Frigga sacrificed herself in Dark World, from what I know of it, because of stuff and watched it. But anyway, I I mean, you know, I still, I mean, I I actually like Frigga as a character. So yeah, so I think she probably was the one that kind of softened him, and then of course dealing with Hela. He's kind of going to have to go back into that old mindset because this is how you created her. This is how you communicated with her. Like you don't know any other way to to be a father to her until yeah. until she whoops your ass at the end of the, the episode. And you see that she has evolved into the very thing you wanted her to evolve into. And then you're like, oh, okay, you know what? If you want the throne, it's yours. You deserve it. And she was like, yeah, well, how else am I going to undo all the damage you've done? She didn't even hesitate. She didn't do what Thor did. Thor was like, no, I don't want the th throne. I want to go have my own life and 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 see who I am without these responsibilities. Hell was like, no, we need to go undo your shit because you fucked everything up. And then you even see them at the end, her, Wen Wu, all, both of the armies, they going after Thanos. So I was like, oh, Okay. Again, mm -hmm. I was not expecting to root for Hella in this episode when it when it first came out. I was like, "Why well, I want to see an episode with her? She did this and she did that." And hmm. see, Hella the White. Her in this it's episode. like it's, you know, just like a soak of the White. white. <laughs> What'd you say? Hella the White, just like a soak of the White. It's like, oh, okay. So we're being derivative now. Okay, cool. But shout shout out to them showing. Showing Wen Wu when she was riding her wolf, Wen Wu was running alongside of her on the rings, like, like the rings were like he was like stepping on the rings as he was running next to her. I, I think she like, did that in the movie too. Either he know. or Shang Chi did. What well, one of them did, uh, used them as kind of like stepping stones. So yeah, cool. but yeah, it's like I love how they put that moment where he was getting ready to turn Gamora. I was like, oh, damn. So so they 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 caught him at the moment where he was getting ready to turn Gamora into his into Gamora, but it was like right before, you know, he mm -hmm. was like perfectly balanced as all things should, huh? She yeah. she literally stopped him from from doing to Gamora what Odin did to her. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. But that yeah, that that's a great that that was that was just like kind of I was actually kind of poetic. I was like, oh shit. So it's like, I mean, that's a great way to end that. This episode, dude, it's like I it was it really snuck up on me how much I liked it. It's just like mm -hmm. from how random it seemed, I was like, okay, this is actually a pretty damn good episode. But I kind of so like she goes from goddess too. of death to she goes from goddess of death to goddess of life. Is that what that is? Basically. Yeah. Goddess dark yeah. goddess to light goddess. Yeah. But I I do like the fact that it is actually kind of separate from the rest of the story because I believe they had an episode 
an episode or two like that in the first season as well, where um, it didn't really go into that large storyline with the the uh what is it um the universe's mighty hero mightiest heroes type thing but mm -hmm. i i like that this is standalone at least from what we know of the other two episodes like i don't think we see her actually i don't think we see either one of them again uh this season which is not to say they wouldn't show up in the third season but um yeah. i kind of like it because it was like I think I said this with with uh, the episode the episode like that from last season. It's like you give us something that's a bit of a break from the main story, which means that the next two episodes are probably going to be devastating in some capacity, right? Or you're gonna you're it's it's gonna be like those episodes are gonna be rough. Like that's where we're gonna see like the big fights. That's where we might lose characters or you know some something of that nature. So like yeah, you give us a little break. Oh, okay, yeah. Have this little, you know, cutesy. Um, I don't know what you want to call it. it not necessarily a rom com, but it kind of sort of has that little flavor. And then you've got the little action here. So yeah, just take a break, watch this, have fun with it, and then just, the next two episodes are gonna be like gut wrenching. That's yeah. It's just like it. last season, the last, previous season, they they put the Thor. Thor being the only child one between the Killmonger one and the la the one where Ultron won. Mm -hmm. So it's like it it literally broke up like and before the before the Killmonger one was the zombie one. It's like the Doctor Strange one, the zombie one, then Killmonger one, then the Thor one. Mm -hmm. And I was like, cause all three of those were like heavy fucking episodes. Like yeah. holy shit. So they're like, okay, we'll give you a break. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, okay, now now Ultron's going to take over the universe. I'm like, goddamn. Right. Yeah, we we'll <laughs> give you the fun stuff before we give you the really heavy stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. But um, I I do know from seeing uh previews from the next episode and like the next two episodes, we're gonna see Wanda and we're gonna see uh Doctor Strange. So I'm like, okay, those two characters just by themselves, that's gonna be chaos. We oh, yeah, don't know Supreme. what versions of them we're gonna see, but those two characters can be chaos. It looked like Strange Supreme. In the, yeah. yeah. So yeah. we already know Strange Supreme has some um he has he's some things he's too. working through. <laughs> so um so yeah, I just I hope he's not well no, because the last time we saw him. He had he had finally let Christine go and he was kind of um I don't want to say captive, but yes, he was kind of a captive, right? Because he was he was responsible or he was forced to kind of stay where he was and and what was he it? was like uh, a he warden. He was yeah, watching yeah. yeah. It was like he was watching, he was making sure they stayed stuck or trapped. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So but if he's back, then that means uh, either who he was watching escaped, and it was what Killmonger and who else? Oh, wasn't it Ultron? Okay, yeah, Zola. Oh yes, and Kill Zola. Kill and Zola in the Ultron's mm -hmm, Ultron, Ultron's mm -hmm. body. Yeah. So either they escaped, or I don't know. Maybe it could be a different version of Strange Supreme. Yeah, he's no, because this was still no. it, it, it looked haggard. He looked haggard the same way, um, the same way he looked last season. So, okay, so we we just know chaos is coming for the next two episodes, right? Look, can we agree on that yeah. at least? <laughs> yes, chaos Maybe. is coming. <laughs> but Anthony, you said you wasn't feeling the ship between them. You wasn't feeling the vibes? Nah, nah, not really. It, it was okay. He, I don't know. I, I, I expect a little bit more backbone from Win Wu. He just seemed to be. But he's not know, the same Win Wu, though. He's a younger Win Wu than when we see him in Shang-Chi. Com com completely enraptured. Just, I don't know. It bothers he's me a, a little bit. He's a he's a younger Win Wu. He hasn't really learned how to how to be hard, how to be the hardened Win Wu yet. 
because he hasn't like gotten married, experienced love, experienced loss, and then been like, fuck everything. And I'm going to. And this one's not power hungry either. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. So his, um, I, and well, I guess, yeah, because the, uh, the other one wasn't power hungry at first either, but I mean, he just seems like on a totally different vibe than the one we're familiar with. So I don't know, maybe, maybe that could be the reason why he just seemed a little more chill or maybe he was just kind of like, okay, look, um, we don't get women around here very often. You're 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 nice and you look good in that red dress. So I'm gonna shoot my shot exactly. now. Unfortunately for him, him shooting his shot meant she take a shot at him. She took a shot at him and knocked him out. And I guess he was like, "Oh, okay. I guess she don't want me." So you know, whatever. And then I mean, she maybe, comes maybe. back to fight beside him. So maybe, maybe he's like. Maybe when we- Maybe when moves into that, maybe you know. I mean, we, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not going to kink shame him. I mean, maybe, maybe he, maybe he's into women <laughs> slapping him around. Where did that, where did that come from? <laughs> I'm just saying, maybe, maybe that's the thing. Maybe he knew that he was going to slap her around, and he was like, "Yeah, I'm going to get, I'm going to get." And I'm she was going to slap him around. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So he, he's on the ground. He's like, "Yeah, that's her." He but, couldn't you know, be like that. She knocked him out. How do you know he was? How do you know he wasn't just like closing his eyes and savoring the moment? Okay, and now see him? why you been uh why you been disagreeing with him. <laughs> you can't change not, now. No, you can't me. change it's the game us. in the ninth inning. You know, no, it's not, we're not it's doing not that. Us. It's not us, Hanukkah. It. It's not. Stop it! Stop it! At any rate. They they put a lot in this episode for. I think the episode was only like twenty five minutes. 27 yeah 27, they put a lot and i was like it's it's interesting to me because if they had done this if this had been live action i think we would have been picking it apart more because it would have seemed like there was not enough going on but for an animated episode i felt like the pacing was really good because if, if this was live it would have felt the same Hmm? If it was live, it would have been the same. It would have felt like they got a lot in. I think they would have extended it a little more. Yeah, I was going to say it probably would have been a little bit longer. But it, because it's like you get the you get the little bit with Wenwu and his warriors, and then you get the little bit with Talo. But the focus of the episode was her and her journey and her growth. And we got to see the majority of that, but, you know, like I said, you got your little side quest here, your side quest there. It The pacing felt good. It was just, it was a fun episode, and I think probably, I think for me, behind the Cohorty episode, this one was probably my favorite. Because, again, this these were pairings I was not expecting, and I wasn't expecting them to mesh that well. Mm-hmm. Because these are, they're both strong personalities but like you said Wenwu is a little bit different in this one yeah so it's not like he's they're not butting heads in that way he was just like oh okay let me try to talk you over to my side and she was like no I'm not hearing it now maybe his approach was different but the way Jai um you know approached her and and pulled what she needed to pull out of her I I don't know it just it just worked like she probably could have stayed at Talo and and been okay if Oda hadn't come to to Midgard. Yeah, she probably would have been like, okay, yes, I have found my my happy place. I have found my zen. I'm good. But then Oda has to come down and kind of like fuck everything up. So, yeah, uh, Heimdall, you should have just left your closed your mouth. He didn't need to know she was missing. He didn't care. He just wanted to know where she was because he he didn't have control over her at that point. That's how I feel about it, you know. Oh, you can't you can't keep an eye on her. You don't know where she is. Oh, we must go investigate. Well, no, he he really did send her there to learn a lesson, and he was just making sure she was on track. So yeah, he did get kind of pissed off when she disappeared. Oh, this dude must have killed her. Mm. So. He wasn't. He he wasn't. But if Heimdall can see all, he would have seen that when Wu didn't kill her. He, he wasn't would have seen she knocked closely. him the fuck out and then left. 
I Mr. think him with vision is more is more or less kind of looking at everything, not really looking at specifics, and then she just kind of disappeared. He was like, wait a second. And then he looked to see where she was, and she wasn't there. So he's just looking over the fence like Wilson instead of with the binoculars in the window. Right. Well, okay. I I guess I'll I'll go with that. I guess. Because I was going to say, other than that, he should have seen what happened. Like, he probably was paying attention, and then she just disappeared. He's like, hmm. But I find it interesting that for a god who has conquered the nine realms, like, you would think he would know a little bit more about the places that he conquered to know, hey, there's like this one spot on this one particular planet that we can't see. No. If he didn't know the if he didn't know it existed, he would have known it wasn't a place he could see. Mm. Okay. Remember, they haven't really explained. They haven't given the explanation as to how the multiverse and the dimensions work. Mm-hmm. Like Tylo is clearly on Earth, but it's in a different dimension. Yeah. Um, and if you remember in Shane, she they talked about other places like Tylo and other. Other planets. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. It's it's weird. <laughs> Even the nine realms, you know, yeah. that's that's all weird. Like, are they, are they in different dimensions, or are they the same dimension as Migar? Mm, okay. It's all kind of confusing. Yeah. Question: I don't remember this part. Were the rings blue at all in Shang Chi? Yes. Or were they always yeah. red? They're blue. Okay. I think they blue I think or they, yellow. They, I think I think they kind of I think when they drew them, I think be, because it's different when you have like computer generated color and like cartoon and like cartoon color. Mm-hmm. Like it's it just it just stands out more now because it's kind of hard to make it, it it would look it would look cartoonish if they did it live action and made the rings glow that blue. You see what I'm saying? It's like I think they were the same color. It just, it just shows more when they draw it. Okay. I just always remember, for some reason, I was always thinking about the red color. Red? Um, I think they when, were yellow. They were gold. When they, Oh, okay. Gold is, but you know, like when they were, um, when they were looking at the signal, I think it was kind of like a, almost like a fire color, if I remember, but I don't know. It's been a while. When Shang-Chi took them over, they, they started glowing gold. Okay. Okay, that's probably what I'm thinking of. It's been a while since I've seen it. So, okay. But, um, yeah, so he kept the rings. Oh, and that was the other reason. Like, Odin was like, oh, okay, we're going to go down to Midgar because um, that primitive people, they don't need to have that kind of power. So we're going to go take it for ourselves. Like I said, asshole. He was an Fucking Odin, 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 Odin base basically called all the all humankind you people. Like, yeah. You people don't, what do you mean, you people? No, yeah. you primitives. He no, he called us all apes. Yeah, th- yeah that too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what he but called us all. That's those, not exactly. That's exactly one of those what I just primitive said. people, yeah. along with your daughter, brought you to your knees. So, okay. But, exactly. How about that? I know. But I enjoyed this episode. Like I said, it was was very different having those characters um, kind of pair up and and fight. And they had good chemistry, even though, you know, when we we was just a little bit too flirty. But um, yeah, I I, I think it was fun. I would like to see that pairing. Thank you. You said it. Too flirty. He was he was too flirty because it was like and again, I I don't know. I just feel like once you shoot your shot, even just a little bit, if she's not being receptive, just leave her alone. But then again, this is somebody from another planet. You don't you don't know what the you don't know what the rules are. You don't know what the boundaries are. I understand. You you're like, you know, it's like the 80s mentality, like, oh, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Oh, okay. She she acted like she wasn't interested. I'm gonna I'm gonna try. I'm gonna keep on. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna be persistent. Because back in back in, you know, when we were kids, that was something that 
folks was you told, know, okay, well, if they didn't, if they said no this time, just just be patient, be persistent. You saying he? You saying he was doing? His, he was getting his Pepe Le Pew on. He was. He was not that. Uh, he was not. So that, Pepe Win Woo. He wasn't that Pepe. bad. Pepe Win Woo. Almost. Almost. Did you say Pepe Win Woo. <laughs> almost. <laughs> he he was almost that bad. But he, oh, it's not working. It's not working. Go lock her up. Okay, bring her back out. Still not working. Lock her up. Bring yeah, her back I mean, out. who's who? Do, who does that? It's like you 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 flirt with someone, they knock you out, and he's like, oh, okay, really. Lock her up to the chances of mine. All right, you ready now? I mean, if he had gained consciousness before she left, he probably would have done that, but she wasn't giving him a chance to do that. She was like, no, you know what? I've already been controlled for all of my life. I'm not coming down here to Midgard to be controlled by some primitive people. She was like, no, this is not what's, what's about to happen. Let me go find the... um. <laughs> Let me go find let me, a let me go ass follow this ass creature somewhere. and go to this <laughs> magical place in a magical forest that's going to try to eat me. <laughs> you know? Shout out to her finding a fast enough horse to get out of there too. Like like they could they 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 barely got out of there in a BMW and she got she got through that motherfucker in a horse. <laughs> and like, that car was turbocharged. Yeah, it was an electric. Uh, it's an electric turbocharged SUV. But and I think bit- she gave. I, I think Morris gave her a little bit more warning than he gave them, just a little bit. And I think I think the forest once it realized. I think I don't think it. Uh, okay, I see. I can't even say that. It's like I was going to say the for the forest like adjust the forest adjusted itself to what it was chasing. Like it went, mm. it went just as fast as it thought it was going to go. Okay, look, I'm gi- I'm giving them, I, I'm giving inanimate things a lot of credit. I realize you, that you really are, you really <laughs> are. Look, I'm just saying, I'm I, I, this is a this is a comic world. Comic things, count things in comic worlds have different attributes. Let's say so. Maybe I mean maybe maybe the horde maybe there was it was. Never mind. See, y'all We're just gonna just have to agree to disagree on that one as well. Look, look you see my face, like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. whatever, fine, whatever. I have a shovel over here. You want to keep digging that hole, sir? <sighs> see, we're not. See, I'm not even going there with you, sir. No, no. Is it just me, or did the watcher put a little bit more flourish on his narration at the beginning of this episode? It just bit. it felt a little more theatrical than usual when he was, he was excited about this episode too. That's yeah, what that was. I think that's what it was. This this se- yeah. this season he's been he's been kind of. You know I mean, remember at, at the end of the at the end of the um Captain Carter and the Hydra Stomper episode, he was like, "What the hell?" Oh uh, well, yeah, <laughs> he has yeah he has been a little bit more personable. Yes, uh, yeah, that was the word I was gonna say, and also a little more human, I think. Yeah, that's yeah. What, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Because he, because he's he's been with all the heroes, I think he's kind of loosened up a little bit. Where he's like, you know, oh, those are my folks. I'm glad they're doing that. You know. Yeah. Like, yeah, and I mean, when you <clears throat> when you kind of lose control and you almost lose the whole mer- multiverse because right, Strange Supreme don't know when to stop. Then yeah, that might teach you to. Oh, okay. You know what? Maybe I shouldn't be so uptight. Let me just loosen up a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna throw some theatrical twist on this narration about Odin and and Hela because it it really did feel that way. Like he was narrating. I mean, you you got to think about it. It's like the Watcher has been by himself for a long time until last season, mm-hmm. where he had like seven people like see his existence. Like before that, no one had ever really seen him because he'd been watching behind the scenes and mm-hmm. no one has seen him. But now it's like a whole lot of people, way more people, 700%. He has 700% increase in people who have actually talked to him and know that he exists. And so I mean, like, uh, Captain Carter called him her friend. So, right. yeah. Okay. And yeah. and strange and strange. I mean, he trusted and trusted Strange Supreme with like the rings and Killmonger and Zola. So it's like, I still think that's a mistake, but I'm not the I'm not the omnipotent one. Yeah, you know. So maybe yeah. I'm just wrong, but I I still think that's 
Because for, for Strange Supreme to have been in the condition and doing the things that he was doing for so long. I'm saying I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust with a, I wouldn't trust with a pack of spearmint. Mm -mm. Like, you know? Mm -mm. Not that quick. Like, why would why would you think he'd be content to just sit in nothingness for right. eternity? Right. right. Unless I mean, unless that's how things were supposed to play out, because he's I mean, he is the watcher. He sees everything. So maybe he's seen how this plays out, and he's like, "Yeah, go ahead and keep that. I know what you're getting ready to do. So you just go ahead and." It's I'm that one playing. possibility out of fourteen million five hundred, whatever. Fourteen million five hundred thirty-five thousand. Okay. Six hundred thirty-one. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. I'll take it, but uh, again, like I said, I, I I don't trust Strange Supreme, and I know he's going to be in one, if not both, of these episodes coming up. That's nothing but chaos. Him that's popping chaos up. Chaos waiting to happen. We know he's going to at least be in the last one because that's what, it's, what if Doctor Strange intervenes. Mm -hmm. So you know he's going to be in that one yeah. at least. So it's like I just don't trust him. Like it, he just pops up when in the middle of a new character, like torturing a queen. It's like right, <laughs> like in the middle of nowhere. Like oh, I've been looking for you. Why? Why? Exactly. Why? Aren't mm -hmm. you supposed to be guarding someone right now? Why are you here? Hmm. Yeah. Right. No good intentions. Mm -hmm. So, um, anything else we want to touch on for this episode? All right, real quick. Um, shout out to Lauren Tom who voices Zha Yi. Um, you guys would know her from the Joy Luck Club. Um, she's a really good actress. Um, she was also Mama Mama Tran in Supernatural. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's like, um, shout out to her for what she did a really good job with that. Um, mm -hmm. They yeah, they did a, they did really good for the voice cast in this one. Like I said, the ones who the characters who whose original actors did not come back to voice them. Yeah, they did really good with kind of I think matching. Because I think, yeah, I think and and Idris, I think, were the only two that came back for yeah. this episode. What if as a whole has done a really good job of giving you voices that are that that won't that that help help you not miss the people that are doing them? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, they have like Lake Bell and the guy that does um the guy that does Tony Stark. It's like they're doing really good, they're doing a really good job. With their voice, with their voice work, mm -hmm. so they're doing a really good job of choosing people. Um, yeah. Shout out to the the other touch that they put in from Shang Chi when when Hella was training with Jai with the slow motion when they when they were going in a circle where she she swung the staff at her and Hella caught it and they were going really slow and mm -hmm. they sent and switched possession and she like, ended up using that she, against Odin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, 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 I love again. This one had so many. I mean, it's one thing to actually put touches from other movies in a show, but to actually do it where it actually meshes pretty well mm -hmm. is another thing. Like, it actually everything that they put in actually meshed pretty well. Um, shout out to when she reunited with Win Wu and he knows what she was wearing and she was explaining like the dragon scales and da da da. And he was like, well, I kind of missed the red dress, though. She's like, Again, the flirtiness. <laughs> mm -hmm. But going back to what you just said about the way that they incorporated the different touches from the different movies, it's almost like with the absence of Thor and, and Shang-Chi as characters, it's kind of like they morphed characteristics from both of those characters and put them into Hela. Right. You know, and, and it like you said, it, it works. You yeah. know, it didn't. It, it didn't feel strange. It didn't feel overdone. It didn't feel like why are they it's having, forced. It, yeah, it was very. It flowed very well. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Anthony, yeah. you got any final thoughts? No. No. Just, why was, I, what was that smile? You look like you look like you wanted to say something. What were you gonna say? I was gonna say I, I don't ship Hella and Winu. I just don't. We know, we know. Okay. You've already said it. It's fine. I think Mike and I can ship enough for for all three of us. We we got Win Hella Hella Woo. Yep. 
But they gotta come up with a better name though. It's like it's kind of that's really awkward. It's like woo, hella woo, winla, winla. I don't know. I can't think of anything. I'll no. get back to you. We're we're not gonna allow Mike to uh do the shit names. It's just not, <laughs> it's not gonna work. <laughs> hella woo woo woo. And on that note, that is it for our show. You can find us online at www.fandomhybrid.com. We are on social media on all the social medias at Fandom Hybrid. You can chat with us on our Discord channel. You can watch our videos on our YouTube channel. And you can listen to us on all major podcast streaming platforms. Thanks for listening. We hope you join the conversation next time.